So right, as always, uh, great training today. I just realized that we focused really on self-defense today. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk a little bit about self-defense. Okay. So let's assume that you have a student who absolutely has no idea about self-defense and he want to learn to defend himself. Um, let's do your teaching first. Um, so yeah, I think um, a lot of people that come to a school, for especially jujitsu school, and they for a few different reasons, but a big one obviously is self defense. Um, I think we do a uh, injustice if we don't teach them. And I think the problem is a lot of times when we think of self defense as just being techniques, like here's how to defend a punch or here's how to get out of a headlock. And I'd say the biggest thing is to explain the difference. First, there's a there's the physical instruction, the techniques. And then there's the conceptual instruction. So sometimes people start learning self-defense and they learn techniques but they don't understand really what they're doing or what their the goal is. Just like when a lot of times you learn the grappling part of jiu-jitsu, you learn a bunch of techniques but you don't really have an idea of how to put it together. It's just like if you were to teach me Turkish, you just talk a bunch of words. I couldn't really put them together if I didn't understand how the sentences work. And so first I teach them what is self-defense, meaning um, the concept. So a lot of times people are taught self-defense when they're really taught fighting. And so and that's a huge, huge difference. Um, in fighting, our goal is what? To win. To win, exactly. So. This is why, for instance, uh, karate, wrestling, boxing, sport, jiu-jitsu, the goal is to go out there, dominate, and uh, uh, submit or knock out your opponent. And that's fine if you're you know, in a situation which doesn't have a life or death potential. Right? You can take those chances. I can come in, swing, maybe I knock you out, maybe I get knocked out. If I get knocked out, um, we have a ref, he stops the situation or there's time limits, there's weight classes, there's all these things to protect me. Um, without all of those things, I don't, have, um, I don't have that assurance that this cannot become deadly. And so self-defense, you said fighting is what? Winning. Winning. Self-defense is not losing. Mm -hmm. Now it sounds like the same thing, but it's an important distinction. I, I put winning behind the idea of first is I just can't lose. I can't get knocked out. I can't get choked out. I can't get beaten up. Any of these things because the only thing that's going to stop you at that point is you. I don't have a ref. I don't have anybody else. And if you want to keep hitting me or choking me, you do it until potentially I die. Yeah. And so self-defense is not about, you know, master kid, you grab me and I do 100 strikes, groin kick, all that. It's um, I, I put myself in a position where I can't get harmed, okay? Um, now, there may be a time where once I get that position, once I get that safety, I can look to then finish the fight, or I can look to escape. But that's a crucial distinction. So first I explain to people um, that the goal is first to be safe, you know, and that colors everything that you train, if you don't have that mindset of the difference between being safe versus victory, everything you train after that will be influenced by that. And it, it doesn't seem like a big deal, it will be a big deal. So does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So I know you know you have a similar vision to me. Yeah. Um, give me an example, for instance, of, uh, let me ask you, of a difference in two things you might do in a, the difference between what, how you might react in a fighting situation versus a self-defense situation. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if a fighting situation I grab you, what's, what might you do? My first uh, reaction will be I... I no, 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 fighting. When I fight? Yeah, we're a, if, you, if you learn you. fighting versus self-defense. Yeah, I try to hit you there. Exactly. Yeah. You try to hit me. Yeah. The problem is what? You have to control of my arm. Right, so you hit me, now I hit you, yeah, I hit and your goal is you're, you're hoping to be what? Stronger than me and Fast overcome me and yeah. all that. So how would a self-defense situation be handled this? I, I go to safety, I release the hold. Right, right. 
Um, because you have to assume, one, again, it's not that I'm going to be bigger, stronger than you. You know, everybody thinks, you know, uh, the question I've always asked is, will this technique work if you were a 50-year-old female secretary? If it works for her, then it's self-defense. But if it doesn't work for her, you're basically saying, well, yeah, it'll work if you're a 200-pound linebacker. Yeah. That's not, uh, to me, that's not a self-defense technique if you have to have a lot of strength, a lot of power, a lot of flexibility to use it. Um, what about distance? So if we're standing, if we're in a fighting situation, where might the distance be? You're just outside of range, right? So yeah. if I throw, you're able to slip and you get right back in and fight. That's right. The problem is, this is, from here, I can kick, I can take you down, maybe, you know, we're fighting almost on equal terms. Yes. Right? You, you have a little bit of safety, but it's a safety of inches, mm -hmm. right? Where might a self-defense stance work? It's very close, right? Or? Or too far away. Right, so now it's much harder for me to get mm -hmm. you by surprise, yeah. okay, or to kick you or to take you down. Or like you said, it's in here where we can smother the, the strikes, mm -hmm. okay? So that doesn't seem like a big thing, but you've seen a lot of people, they practice and they stand where? Right, right in the punching range. Even when uh, you train jiu-jitsu sometimes, you come in, you do what? You do this, you do this, and right. This here. And you practice your grappling right here. What's yeah. the problem? You get comfortable mm -hmm. standing in that area so that if you did end up in a situation out here, the guy's arguing with you, where are we standing? Right here and? And it's a dangerous And way. also sometimes yeah. with? The hands are down. Right, yeah. right. So, you know, we always practice with our hands up, yeah. you know, making sure they're always aware of the distance. So. When you're only focused on sort of fighting or grappling, you don't manage to, the distance isn't as important. Mm -hmm. Because we both agree to be at this distance. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so that's, that's a big difference. So I, I would explain to them first what they're trying to accomplish, which is we're trying to get to places of safety. That can mean escaping, that can mean if I am stuck somewhere, where can I avoid punches, where can I get to a position where I'm not, I'm able to breathe and keep my composure. Mm -hmm. um, and everything we do is, is sort of based around that. And then if we absolutely have to, we use um, our jiu-jitsu in an offensive manner. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, that's submissions because those give us the greatest um, Options. Mm -hmm. If I'm a boxer and you're bugging me, what's my only option? Gentle cross out of Yeah, to hit you. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Which maybe you're my friend and then you're just acting out of control. I want to have to punch you. Right. Um, or I don't even want to have to punch you now. Maybe I have to go to jail or deal with the law enforcement. Whereas with a jujitsu situation, you just clinch me, you could you know, choke me, you could hold me down, you mm -hmm. could do a joint lock. And even if you're choking or doing a joint lock, right? Mm -hmm. You could talk to me. Like, then you need to calm down, mm -hmm. okay? And then get compliance. You can't get compliance once you start doing the crop of kicking me in the balls yeah, and right. hitting me in the eyes and all this. There's no compliance. Yeah. So I would explain that for self-defense, it's the mindset dictates the technique training and how you train the techniques. Okay. Um, you know, for instance, um, you know, I've said this before. Um, I know I'm going a little off topic, but one of the things I have a pet peeve with is when people say, X is the best technique. This is the best way to block a punch. This is the best way to do a takedown. This is the best way to escape an arm lock. Well, that all depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. right? Are we in the street? Do we have multiple opponents? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the best control position on top? Well, we went over this the other night when we were working with a police officer. What do I think it is? Maybe being on belly because you can control the hands, you can see the hands, you can see around you. Mm -hmm. In a tournament situation, maybe it's back control, mm -hmm. right? That wouldn't necessarily be a great position, you know, in a street situation where I can't monitor his hands as well. You know, maybe I can attack the neck, but I can't see him reaching for a weapon. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying it's bad, but we have to take those things into account. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, what you train from a self defense perspective. You know, do you have to, in sport grappling, do you have to worry about my hands other than being in your collar or grabbing your wrist? Not much. No, not really. Right? If we're punching, yep. you've got to always be aware of my, where my hands are because it can maybe only take one punch. Yep. 
Um, you've got to monitor the distance differently. So, for instance, guard, please. Yes. My guard, close guard. In a non self defense situation, ideally, I want you right about here in this mid range. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want you too close where you kind of smother me and it's hard anything, and I don't want you too far away where I can't get the submissions. Mm -hmm. So, right here, you'll notice that's ideal for arm blocks, mm -hmm. it's ideal for shooting triangles. Mm -hmm. The problem is, in a fight, this is ideal for you, yeah. right? Just, yeah, here, I make it harder for you to hit me, or no, here, I make it harder for you to hit me. Mm -hmm. But just as before, if I get comfortable letting you be in this position, when I get in a fight, this, position. this is a bad position. That's right. Right, so it doesn't seem like a big difference, and people will say, well, I can just transfer it from one to the other. That's not that easy, right? No, you, you absolutely... You're used to that. You, you fight like you train. Yeah. You know, so if you don't train um, take downs, for instance, mm -hmm. constantly, where you know you, you went today with hockey, right? You had guys battle for take down in like 15 minutes, yeah. right? That's it's right. tough, right? Mm -hmm. But you didn't give up. You kept working for it, right? You have to develop that, that uh, commitment to it. Because if you train for, and again, I'm not trying to bad mouth competition, but if you train for where you're sort of allowed to pull guard or taught to pull guard all the time, what I say is you, under stress, your body will do what it's trained to do. Yes. So if you and I are fighting, we're in here, we're fighting, we're in a clinch fighting here, and you need me, and I know I want to get to the ground, mm -hmm. that's where I'm comfortable, but I don't train takedowns as as much as I train guard pull, what's going to happen? I'm going to want to start yeah, yeah, pull you down. And the problem now is what? In a fight, now you're on top. That's right. right? Um, versus, you know, I, t I eat that knee. It hurts, right? Okay, but I'm still going to work for the takedown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because my stress reaction is put him down, mm -hmm. not, not get him down on top of me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a situation. Um, and so once people understand what the goal is of jiu-jitsu, you know, uh, learning how to be safe against anything the person might throw at you, how to put yourself in safe positions, and that's really the key to the art. Um, and then examine your options, whether it's escape, whether it's finishing the fight. Um, they operate from there. And then we give them the techniques to do that. Um, and it's important that they understand that it's not just ground fighting. Mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, one of the biggest misconceptions is people think jujitsu is just ground fighting, and more specifically, being on the bottom of the ground fight. Um, the reason that we have that idea of being underneath somebody is not because we want to be there. That's the last place we want to be. But that's why we do it, because it's the last place we want to be. So we learn to be safe there, but that's never our goal. Our goal is to escape the fight as early as possible, right? So that means we practice what? Our standing self-defense. Our standing self-defense, right? Because once the fight goes to the ground... It's a fight, then. Yeah, it's a fight. It's committed. It's a full-on committed fight. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't... I start losing control of variables. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't control getting away. I can't control who else might get involved as easily. Um, so if you don't practice the standing self-defense and you only practice the ground fighting, you're basically... Uh, defenseless until it goes to the ground. Once it goes to the ground, that's a dangerous place to be. Yes. So um, we tr we focus a lot on the standing self defense, the takedowns, the you know we work uh, standing blocking punches, throwing punches. Um, I think that's a huge part of jujitsu, huge part of self defense. You have to know how to do all that. But as far as the grappling, um, then we get into the techniques, and so. I think, and you've seen this before, um, training here, there's a lot of people who learn a lot of techniques, right? Um, for me, jiu-jitsu, you've heard me say this before, jiu-jitsu is an art of control. Control, right? It's not a submission art. Mm -hmm. um, control comes through connection. Right? I can't control you if I'm over here. That's why things like jiu-jitsu are more self-defense oriented because I can literally control you or at least predict your actions. Boxing, it's a lot harder to control somebody. I have to do it through very subtle means. Jiu-jitsu, you can literally just wrap somebody up and they can't hit you. 
Um, so convection gives me control or predictability. Yeah. All right, so you, you've seen me do this experiment before. You put your hands on my biceps, you close your eyes, you block this punch. Yeah. Now you take your hands off my biceps, you keep your eyes closed. Do you think you can block this yeah, punch? Yeah, yeah. No. So just something as simple as this. You're not even wrapping me up, you're just here. So we're always, you know, getting into connection here where I can predict what he's going to do. Um, now, here's the important part. You will hear some people say, control leads to submission. No. Control leads to a result, an execution of a finish. It could be punching. It could be deployment of weapon. It could be submission. Right. It could be standing up. It could be standing up. It could be negotiation. Mm -hmm. Right. I think when people think submission, they're a little still a little too too narrow. Too narrow in their focus. Yeah. Right. If if you mount me, you're controlling me. I'm just doing this. You're not going to spend your time trying to submit me. You just hit me. Yeah. Right. So it's it's leading to the execution of some sort of of some sort of uh, finish. Mm -hmm. Let's say um, submission again is the least damaging way to me and potentially you in the least legally troubling way. So we tend to focus that. Um, so I focus a lot of my instruction on control. Right? If you control me correctly, you'll get the submission. Right? If you don't control me, then now you see this a lot, two people sort of jumping at each other the whole time, trying to, you know, I'm going to grab your foot, you're going to grab my arm, we're going to spin all around. And it's, it's really sloppy. It, it kind of, uh, you know, it is what it is, but I, I really hate to see that style of jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. um, I think Pedro Blanche Jr. once said, you know, uh, good jiu-jitsu should be boring. And I, and I like that, right? It should be, you know, you've seen me roll me, roll me. It's, it's, it's kind of boring in a way, right? Because I don't do a lot of jumping around stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we move and we have fun, but... Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't want to take chances and give you space, right? Um, so first is learning how to, when I say control, by the way, art of control, it also means not letting me control you. We work this today, stand up for this. Where I'm trying to grab around the head, and you're not going to let me grab you around the head here. So part of the art is what? You're learning that inside control, being in the correct position. Here, can I grab your head? Am I controlling you? No. If you didn't do that, here. so it's not just about me, it's not just about learning to control someone, it's learning to deny control, right? So you don't want to, we'll learn how to escape headlocks, but what's the best headlock escape? Net, net, net headlock between the first. Yes, so part of that is learning correct frames, correct positioning, correct posture, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't, learning to get me in a headlock, learning all of this and how to escape and do all that is great, mm -hmm. right? But that's only because you messed up. In the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. Right? So if you really focus on, you've heard me say this, right? We can be out of place, mm -hmm. but we never be, want to be out of position. Right. So I may have your back, mm -hmm. but all your protection is in place, is in correct position. position. Yeah. yeah. I may mount you, but if you're in the correct position, you're good. Mm -hmm. um, I may mount you, and I may be out of position where I can't get anything going, or I can't hold you. So, you know, I think too many people, and sometimes they think they just focus on place. Don't ever let the man pass your guard, don't ever let them take you back. Let all that happen. But learn how to be safe in all those places. Mm -hmm. Okay? Conversely, if you do get to a good position, learn how to not let him be safe. Mm -hmm. To me, that's, you know, that's, that's my art. That's yeah. the art I teach. Yeah. Right? Because then, if I want to hit you, I want to choke you, it's all pretty easy. And this is, you know, I know you now. This when you get to the when you get me out of position, you know I'm in deep trouble. Like I have a very hard time escaping you now um, because of that. But it's not just you know did air come arm bar. That's that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. It's did you not mean you got my arms out of position? You got under my legs when you got your hooks in. <sighs> yeah. Then the arm bar will happen eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, or I just have to power out of it. So. And I guess lastly, too, the technical part is always overcoming strength, uh, physical advantages, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think a lot of times 
jiu-jitsu has turned into being stronger, more athletic than the other person. Right? That's sad, yeah. Yeah. And so you get guys and then you go to gyms, I've been in gyms before, where the workout is 40 minutes long. You know, then like 10, 15 minutes of instruction and then rolling or maybe drilling. And so everybody's in amazing shape, but that kind of misses the people that jiu-jitsu was created for. Yeah. Right? Um, I'm not saying don't work out, but you know, I like to do more specific drills in class, but you know, if you're basing it on, you know, I've got to be super in shape and super athletic, that that only works as long as you're more athletic or stronger than the other person. Or that you learn or that you uh, have your cardio skill. So that you know we don't set timers here. That's right. Yeah. Right. So that you can't just go crazy for four minutes and then hope for a one minute rest. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get stuck underneath something, if I get stuck underneath you, I've been stuck underneath you before for quite a while. Yeah. Right? And sometimes you've been smothering me and really, you know, making life miserable. Part of jujitsu is going, okay, I can't just go crazy and get out because if I go crazy and I fail, now the fight will be over. That's right. I have to learn how to be safe here, deal with this, be comfortable in the, un in the uncomfortable situation. Mm -hmm. And then when I see the opening, when it happens, then I can escape. Uh, and that patience is, I think, one of the most important virtues on the mat and off, that you'll take off the mat, mm -hmm. is learning sometimes I can't get out of this situation right away. I've got to make the best of it, and I've got to wait for the opening, or the, the escape, or the progression mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I know we've kind of gone off topic, but I would say that, that if, if you could lay that foundation in people's minds mm -hmm. of how they should train, um, versus just, you know, hey, we're going to have someone smash you, and then you try to turn around and smash somebody else. Um, and rip an arm lock or rip a triangle. I don't, I, I think people get lost because then what happens is they learn a triangle that works and then it doesn't work anymore. What happens? They go home and they, they YouTube they some, YouTube some new moves. Yeah. And then they have 20,000 moves. Um, you know, I've had people I've trained with in the past and, you know, they know 20,000 moves, but they're not good at any of them. Mm. You know, and you can see it, so they're jumping around, switching from move to move to move to move to move. Um, you know, if you just focus on the concepts behind the moves, um, you can always adapt. And then if you just make your game simple, um, it's much harder to break. Mm. You know, I always think it's easier to fix a car from the 60s than it is to fix a car from the 90s. Mm. Because the, the computer chips and mm -hmm. fuel injection and all this. Yes. You open a car from the 60s, it's nice and simple. And often they're just as fast as the ones from the 90s. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, for our jiu-jitsu, for here at Gracie uh, Schwartzold, um, you know, we, we teach it all. But I really want you guys, when you get a blue belt, it's not, can you win this turn? It's, if you walked outside now, somebody came up in the parking lot and tried to attack you, would you have the tools to deal with that? Mm -hmm. Would you know how to get out of the headlock? Would you know how to deal with somebody trying to punch you? Would you know how to put somebody down? Would you know what positions to go to where you're safe? Um, so I think that's the goal of a martial art. It's, it's, it was not, uh, it was the idea of a martial art was not a sport. It was always surviving or fighting or not fighting, but defending oneself. Yeah, yeah, I think that gets lost. It, it gets lost, I think, eventually in almost every martial art. You know what I like here most? I trained in a lot of martial arts, and it was like when I trained Wing Chun, it was training Wing Chun techniques against Wing Chun techniques. When mm -hmm. I trained Karate, it was Karate versus Karate. What I like here most is, especially the first session we have in, in the training day, is uh, having Jiu Jitsu against the rest of the world. That's right. the way you call it, and that's one point which makes me feel safer because we deal with street fighter attacks. Yeah, I think, like you were saying before, like I think when, when a martial art becomes a sport, and again, I've competed a lot, I don't have problem com competition, but you have to understand it only tests one small, it only tests one part of your jiu jitsu. And if you focus on it too much, you forget all the other parts that you're going to have to deal with in a real fight. So people say, well, you know, if I can win a tournament against a purple belt, I can do other fight. 
Yeah, except that purple under the terminal wasn't trying to punch you, it wasn't trying to headbutt you, you weren't on pavement, you know, um, you didn't have to worry about weapons, you know, slams, anything like that. That's all. And if you think that those things don't matter, they absolutely do. They do. Um, and so, you know, what you're saying about, you know, I think a, a jiu jitsu comes more focused on sport is it does, it focuses on fighting jiu jitsu. Right? So you have guys who, you know, they know how to get into, you know, the 411 leg lock position in 20 options. They kind of laugh at anybody who doesn't know how to defend those 20 options. Yet they never once practiced defending a punch. Right? So in a fight, you're not going to deal with, can you just stand up? Sure. You know, as I always say, you're not going to really be dealing with somebody who's going to be, you know, doing all this stuff and attacking your legs. You're going to be dealing with somebody who's trying to knock you out. And, you know, I sort of mentioned this before, the, you know, untrained versus trained. For jiu-jitsu, the beginning of your jiu-jitsu, and actually the whole career, but the main focus should be fighting untrained people. And people will say, well, anybody can beat an untrained person. That's not true. It's not true because... One, an untrained person is committed 100%. Mm -hmm. right? You don't really roll that often where somebody's really going as hard as they can. But more often than not, again, he's using different weapons. Mm -hmm. So for instance, can I just stand up? If you're dealing with a good jiu-jitsu guy in a sports situation, what is it I'm trying to do from on my back here? I'm probably trying to get grips, right? Mm -hmm. I'm maybe trying to entangle you, mm -hmm. you know, getting you know, all of this. What's, what do you have to worry about? You have to try to pass my guard. You have to worry about submissions. Mm -hmm. You have to worry about all of this. What if I'm not trained? So approach the guard like you would if it was a sports situation. Me? As a yeah. jiu-jitsu guy? Right. Yeah, see how you're bent over yeah. and you're playing this and... You kick me in the face. Right. So am I trying to do all of this if I'm an untrained, uh, if I'm an uh, untrained no. uh, guy? What am I trying to do in a real fight? Kick and stand up. Kick, kick you, get away and stand up. So, can you stop? So if I'm approaching this way as I might against a purple belt, yeah. I'm going to get kicked in the face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I'm not practicing here, and I want to avoid, against a, a trained guy, I want to avoid you entangling me and all of this, right? I'm trying mm -hmm. to control this. But the problem is, if I don't entangle myself, can you get back to your feet? Yeah. Absolutely, right? So, in a real fight, what am I going to do? i got to clear those feet, i got to get it, and i got to start getting you to stop, stop you from standing up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to kick and stand up. Mm -hmm. Which is actually Grandmaster Elio's self defense, right? Yeah. What do we do when we get on the back? You know? We don't try to untangle. What is it, the, the basic thing, right? We pedal out, mm -hmm. we kick, and we stand up. That's yeah. our basic self defense. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what you should do. So if you're not training to pass that guard, I don't really care if you can pass a deep half guard. You're not going to have to pass a deep half guard on the street. Yeah. You're going to have to pass a guy who's trying to kick you. You can't pass that unless you practice to pass that. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm, you know, if I'm playing half guard here and I'm doing this, and the guy starts raining punches down on me, right? I can't say, well, yeah, but in a real fight, I would have never done this. Yeah. You would have to. Yeah. Right. Here, you pass the side control. I'm blocking here. This is fine, but can you posture up and start throwing punches? Yes. Yeah. So this is okay, but maybe now I want this position. Now you try to posture up and put it here. And then you go, you really go, then I can start, and look, I'm still controlling. Mm -hmm. Versus, it's not just about this, okay? So your frames will, will differ because the threat is different. Mm -hmm. And so you can't say, well, that guy doesn't know how to defend a triangle, so he must, you know, he's not a threat. <laughs> he's sitting up knocking you out. He's absolutely a threat. Yep. Um, so that's, that's the guy we train for first mm -hmm. and most importantly, mm -hmm. right? Because he is a threat. Um, and he's a threat that will be potentially lethal. You know, if you're rolling in here, you get caught in a triangle by, you know, Julian. You tap, what's he going to do? He'll let go. Go. Right? Guys punching you in the street. You kind of tap. Yeah. Right. So um, you're absolutely right. You know, unfortunately, you know, as we've seen, there's a lot of people that train at sports schools now that come in, they have 
no knowledge of how to defend punches, headlocks, how, headlocks yeah. you know, uh, how to escape bait, very common positions, right? Um, and you know, it's, it's sad, you know, they, they know how to do spider guard, but they, they don't know how to, you know, uh, get back to their feet. That's right, and if you're in the guard position of someone like that and you have them in the headlock, mm -hmm. they get mad and ask you to, to do real jiu-jitsu. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you gotta let go, you gotta do something. <laughs> no, no, I don't have to let go. Sure. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with you know, everyone here because everyone here is completely on board. You know, and, and again, we teach, I've taught deep path guard and stuff. You know, we teach it all. I do believe in making it fun. But I believe those things are, I kind of call them like dessert. Yeah, you're right. You have dessert once in a while with a meal, but you don't make it your whole meal. That's right. The first, the, the, the healthy food is learning to, you know, defend strikes, learning to what positions to be in so you can't be hurt, mm -hmm. learning uh, uh, how to get back to your free, learning how to get away, uh, and then, you know, learn the other stuff.